Hello and welcome to today's episode of LinkedIn with Louise and today we are going all the way around to the other side of the world to New Zealand to meet my lovely guest Lanair Johnson. Lanair, welcome to the podcast. Thank you Louise, it's my pleasure to be here. So uh, we have known each other online but only actually ever met once before in person so I'm delighted I'm going to like pull all the information out of you today Lanair. Um, for the readers and the, the listeners and the viewers. And I'm really excited to get stuck in. But before we do, could you please um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do in terms of business? And you can also share some gardening tips. All right. Okay. Well, I'm in the right place if I can talk about gardening. Right. So <laughs> as you say, I'm a New Zealander. I'm absolutely obsessed about LinkedIn and I've been a professional writer all my life. So when I discovered that LinkedIn had a publishing facility, I just fell in love. I've written um, a book, Linkability. I've co-authored the world's first book about LinkedIn company pages, Business mm. Gold, with our joint friend, Michelle J. Raymond. And my business, Linkability, is all about helping people leverage the power of LinkedIn to achieve their professional goals. So that's all about profile makeovers, uh, content strategy, content implementation, and any other way that you can get visibility online, on LinkedIn, I am all over that. I'm mainly known, Louise, for new features, and I just love keeping a handle on what's going on, what's new on LinkedIn, and figuring out best ways to work it. So uh, yes, as I say, obsessed by LinkedIn. <laughs> so but you didn't start there. How did you get into this, Lanair? How did how did you, you know, because you know you are a complete expert, and I love your you do these um, new feature roundups. How often do you do them? Do you do them like a monthly basis or a weekly basis? No, How fortnightly. Often? If I did them monthly, there would just be way too many too to be long. Able to yeah. Remember. Yeah, there's yeah. been more than 160 this year so far. And uh, so fortnightly is how mm -hmm. often um, I do those. So how did I get into this? Well, I was a copywriter. I've been a professional writer all my life, but right. I was a copywriter, had my own copywriting business, Word Wizard, for more than 20 years. Ah. And then when I decided covered LinkedIn and its publishing platform, uh, I, as I say, I fell in love and realized yes. the possibilities that it had. So I started writing. I wrote about writing, which is what you do on LinkedIn. You write about what you know about, of course. <laughs> and then quite literally one morning I woke up and discovered that the Social Media Marketing Institute of Australia had put me in their list of top 20 LinkedIn experts, Asia Pacific. And at the top of the list for New Zealanders. Well, you had to pick me up off the floor, Louise. I'd never thought that I was an expert. And um, I was really, really surprised that people thought that I had expertise in LinkedIn. Anyway, I thought to myself, what does a link what does an expert have? An expert has a book. So during the first lockdowns of COVID, I sat down and wrote a book and uh, it's all been absolutely brilliant from there. It's got me uh, international recognition and people do seem to think that I know what I'm talking about, which is just lovely because I get to help so many people. And brilliant. last year I put together a membership site to be able to help more people. So yeah, I just love it. As I say, obsessed, Louise, obsessed. Great. No, I, my light's gone a bit funny. We're on the. I'm going to put you on the solo picture to bring myself back in because my lighting has gone funny. <laughs> For those of you who are on this the podcast, podcast. Me, I've now gone into the dark, which is what it is right now because it is 20 past seven in December in Northern Ireland. So it actually is dark, but I don't know how to get the light back on. So then there, it might just be a solo show. <laughs> right. Well, then I'll talk about gardening. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's amazing like I saw because I was doing lots of research on you and it's on your website and I saw that you had this accolade from the social media social media institute of Australia social media marketing institute of Australia mm -hmm. mm. I'm trying to get my light back here and um, that's amazing and you had no idea it was coming 
no idea, didn't even know it existed, didn't know they did a list of experts, um, and was absolutely bowled over that mm -hmm. they would uh, include me. And so that meant I had to change my mindset entirely, because uh -huh. I recognised that if other people were seeing me as an expert, then that came with responsibilities, Louise. Yeah. Um, I couldn't just flounder anymore and just write about making mistakes and really just doing what I wanted on LinkedIn. I had to take it a lot more seriously uh, mm -hmm. and really get to grips with it, really understand it the best I possibly could. And so that's what I spent the last few years doing. And every day I wake up and look at look LinkedIn and wonder what am I going to learn today? Because it's never ending. There's always something new to learn. It's just amazing. I love it. I love it. Brilliant. And so we have a mutual friend in Sydney, Karen Tisdale, yes. who also writes profiles, but she only writes for people in Australia and New Zealand. Are you the same then there or do you work with people from anywhere? I work with people from anywhere. I, because New Zealand is at the bottom of the world, uh, I love to work with people all over the world because it makes yeah. me feel more connected, which is one of the things I love about LinkedIn is you can yeah. meet and talk with anybody anywhere. Look at us. I'm at the bottom of the world. You're Look right at up. the top. And here we yeah. are. Amazing <laughs> what technology allows us to do today, isn't it? <laughs> and you're, in the, you're in the light and I'm in the dark. <laughs> well, that could be said, yes. <laughs> Most people think New Zealand is in the dark, but there you go. Oh, dear. So one second. So that was hilarious. We, um, you, You've all got to go over to YouTube and watch this because um, now we have the light back on and I'm like super bright. <laughs> so anyways, right, so Linair, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on, apart from the fact you've got this amazing accent and all of this amazing knowledge, is that I would like to talk about writing. Because yes. I, well, I love writing and I actually tagged you in a post on LinkedIn today, which you probably haven't seen because it's your morning time, um, about a brilliant, uh, I got a newsletter from um, somebody and it talked about copywriting online and social media and how clever it can be. And it made me think about, there are people who are using AI to write their posts for LinkedIn. And unfortunately, there are people using AI to write their comments. So then you've got posts on You've literally got AI posts that are just their comments are all AI. And I'm like, who these robots are just talking to each other. What is the point in that? Where you and I are more all about human writing, correct? We are, absolutely. And I think that the arrival of AI in terms of writing for LinkedIn is a real danger, Louise, mm -hmm. because will lose their individuality mm -hmm. i've looked at some of the writing that ai comes out with and my eyes glaze over yeah. the sentences are so long there's so much jargon and what i like to call obfuscation um <laughs> nothing is written simply there's a lot of repetition and yeah. i just i just don't think that that is good for anyone it's not good for the platform it's not no, good for the no. members we don't want to read that kind of nonsense and don't get me started on the comments written by ai seriously i mean what's the point we're here on linkedin to develop relationships get to know people build the know like and trust factor so how is ai going to help us do that if we are not communicating directly with our audience yeah i, I completely yeah. agree um it's really it's, the weird thing about it for me and i kind of i i understand where it's coming from so microsoft owns linkedin and microsoft are heavily invested in chat gbt they own like 49 percent of it i think so they as a company as a corporation they don't want to get left behind they want to be on the ai train etc cetera, etc cetera. But I don't think they should be doing it on LinkedIn, personally. The flip side of that, of course, is, you know, a lot of people in corporates. So I think a lot of people who listen to the podcast will be small business owners, um, entrepreneurs, those kinds of people. And ne not necessarily people who are working in corporates. Although, guys, if you are, you know, working in corporate and want to use LinkedIn and you are a podcast listener, let me know because I'm really intrigued then because we might, you know, have a bit of a chat about that. But I think there's a lot of people in corporate who want to post on LinkedIn and just like, oh, I don't have time to do this, don't know what to write. And for those people, the rewrite with AI might help them a little bit, might help them with their confidence. But third-party AI programs that people are just using to, like, 
just write nonsense on and it is nonsense you know it's it is nonsense and absolutely you only have to look at any of the collaborative articles to know that it's nonsense um but (laughs) i my my concern about this i think louise is Mm. that it's not teaching people anything right you know learning how to write and write well is an absolutely basic skill for success in business, whether you're corporate, whether you own a small business, or whether you are working for someone else, you have to be able to write and write coherently. And I think that AI is going to take that away because there's no need for people to be self-critical over their writing. There's no need for them to go through it and look and go, well, hang on a minute, that doesn't make sense. Their attitude is very likely to be, well, ChatGTP wrote this so it must be right yes so they're not so there's two things there grammatically it might it might not be great but also well it's readability a, a, a lot readability. of it might be you know, factually incorrect it comes from chat gpt so i know yeah. it's interesting when you when i write an email and i've got quite good at this now i think and um, i always check how many times i've put an exclamation mark because i'm so guilty of that oh, I write, I do too. Hi! exclamation mark <laughs> I do it in my comments on posts. I'm shocking for that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think I overdo the ex- exclamation. Oh, I totally do. I sent my sister a message on Messenger earlier, and every single sentence ends up with an exclamation mark. And I thought, Louise, what are you doing? And she's a teacher, Linair, so she'd be having oh, none dear. of it. <laughs> oh, bet she's not either. Um, and people can be a bit like that. P- p- writers who are really good at what they do don't like emojis either. And I've tended towards using those. Uh, I love emojis. Well. But, my, <laughs> but my, my, I think my problem with around all of this is that it's not teaching people something that is a transferable skill, at least not yet. Now, who knows where AI is going to go in the future, but yeah. I don't want to be in a world where people can't write their own content yeah. or their own yeah. material that they always were relying on chat, GPT or, or AI, because well, I think that's, that's, that's a real I don't think, doesn't it? It's all right. Sorry. I said it would lead to dumbing down, I think. I think you're absolutely right. And people not understanding what makes good content. Because if you feel that you can just create it with AI and it doesn't need checking, it doesn't need rewriting or editing into your own yeah. voice, then what you do is you st- sound homogenized. You sound the same as everybody else. Mm-hmm. And there's no difference between the, the style of that and the style of anybody else. Now, you and I write in quite different styles. Yeah. And I've become yeah. quite a lot more chatty with my writing because as a professional writer over the years, years I've never been able to be chatty Louise because I'm always writing for somebody else I'm representing somebody else and Mm -hmm. so it's only more recently that I started to break away from that conditioning and go well I'm just going to write about this and how I feel about this and what's actually going on for me and be a bit more vulnerable and talk Mm -hmm. about something that didn't go quite right Um, something that might I've had to learn from a mistake I made or whatever and nothing like that comes through in chat GPT at all ever yeah I agree so let's help people write let's let's Good. use today to talk about I want to have a few questions number one is how to write <laughs> then oh then, right. well that won't take very long to answer then. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to talk about how to get inspiration for writing yes how to be consistent in writing and once you've got all those things you're trundling along how do you improve your writing? So let's start with how do you actually write, okay? So this All could right. be for a website, it could be for email newsletters, or it could be for LinkedIn. How do people actually get started writing? I think the fundamentals are the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so I think this is going to be the easiest question uh, to answer, Louise. So getting started is a matter of getting out your pen and paper, if that's what you use, or opening a Word document on, on, your, um, on your computer and actually starting to write. If you mm-hmm. sit there and think, what am I going to write about? You'll never start. So the mm-hmm. thing to do is to start with whatever's in your mind and then you're 
you'll end up by talking about the thing that you really want to talk about and then in the editing process which we'll go back and talk about that's when you clean it all up at the beginning and then mm. you put a really good headline on it and away you go so I've got several rules for really Ooh. good writing the Brilliant. first is to, be, to make it simple you want to make your sentences short so they are easy to read you want to use simple words, words that people understand. So lots of long words like obfuscation are not words that you really want to see in your copy. You want to make sure that they're words that everybody understands. You don't want to be using jargon, marketing terms, or anything that's going to make it harder for people to understand or read what you're trying, trying to say. You need to have one idea per paragraph. Oh, and okay. you need to really have, in terms of posts, one main idea per post. If you try to make it too complex, people simply won't understand it. And that's where ChatGPT hasn't got it worked out. One <laughs> idea, make it simple, make it easy to read and really easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And the other side of this is that it needs to be formatted in a way that's also easy to read. So if you imagine one great big block of dense text, like they used to write in the Middle e uh, medieval days with no paragraph breaks and no uh, uh, full stops between sentences, you want to be able to make it really easy for the eye yeah. to run down the page. Because don't forget, people are often reading on devices these mm -hmm. days uh, not they don't have anything physical in their hands anymore and so you need to make it easy on the eye so lots of white space is the other mm -hmm. thing then that I would um, recommend and you know this is a bit off uh, the, just the basics but please don't fill your LinkedIn posts with hashtags <laughs> they make it so hard to read or just hash for um, tags at mentions because, you know, they stand out in blue and they really look really difficult and they, they, they're not easy on the eye. So you have to think of the visual nature of what yes. you're doing as well. Oh, Again, absolutely. that's what my cat knows. You just made me think of an article I read yesterday in The Guardian. So I read The Guardian every weekend. It's my favourite. I only, I only buy one paper a week and it's The Guardian on a Saturday. And it was um, talking about when people, they've, so psychologists, or someone's got to correct me in the comments about this, but psychologists, I think psychologists or psychi not psychiatrists, came up, um, they said that when you read off a page of a book as opposed to off a screen, it actually improves your intelligence. Oh. And how, yeah. And your um, is it the comprehension of the of what you're reading? Anyway, it was really really interesting. And I thought, oh well, there you are. Let's let's get back to going to the library and getting out books from the library, especially for your kids. It was I think it was to do with children and development and stuff. And it said definitely it's much better. Um, now they said don't that doesn't mean don't read from devices because if there's lots of people going, well, we only have devices to read and we get them. In the UK, Lanair, we can get, um, you can borrow books from the library on your Kindle or, or other electronic devices as well. So I you listen don't to audio books. books. Yeah. From so my you, library. Don't, you don't even yeah. go to the library. You can literally download them for free in your library app. Um, but I love going, like I'm reading a James Patterson. Don't um, don't judge me, anybody. Currently oh, reading I've James read one too. I, do, I bet it's the same. Is it about Christmas? It no, it's it's um, one of his um, women's murder club ones. <laughs> oh right, okay. Now this was a funny one about the twelve days of Christmas. So sorry, I digress. But yes, read books that you hold. They have a spine and pages. I love it. Yes, I love books. So that was interesting. That's a complete aside. Sorry guys. So <clears throat> yeah, I love that format for writing. So one idea per paragraph. Yes. And if it's for LinkedIn, one main idea per post. One hundred percent agree with you. Um, today I saw a post on a different platform um, of a lady who runs a yoga studio near me and the entire thing had literally no paragraphs and no white space and she was trying to, she was trying to share a really important message about supporting your local small businesses and I thought no one is reading this because it is about 300 words all crammed together on my screen and I want to read it but I, but I can't read this, it's terrible. So yeah. people are not being taught. Um how to write online either, you know. <laughs>
Um, we had a very senior politician who uh, was ousted in a change of leadership or government, I can't remember what now, mm -hmm. and she wrote her uh, a post on LinkedIn about her new role she was moving into real estate, and she was wanting to really talk it up and how great it was, and it was all in one paragraph, Louise, exactly like you describe it, for her main big announcement, and she managed to make it unreadable for anybody. Oh. You know, you think that people at that kind of a level would understand the basics of this sort of thing, but yeah. they don't. No. Um, I don't know about what it's like in the in the US, but here, uh, so in the UK rather. Um, are you part of the UK? Or am I allowed to say that, or is that the wrong? We thing are to still, say? yeah, for now. <laughs> For now, all right. Okay. In the UK. But here, our politicians, senior leaders, CEOs, don't take LinkedIn seriously, um, don't use it really well, don't understand oh, what all they're all about. And yeah. so consequently, the, the results they get are poor and they come across in a very poor way. So I think yeah. that one of the things that really I like about LinkedIn is it's relatively a level playing field. And yeah. you and I, in small yeah. businesses, can do as well as, if not mm -hmm. better, if I might just say this, mm -hmm. um, than a lot of people at really senior levels because we understand how it works and what to do. Uh, right on it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, so people, anyone needs to rewind that, go and rewind. I'm sure you have a blog on how to write Linear. I've written about writing so much, Louise, that I'm mm. sick of it down to my own pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to give me the link at the end for everyone can go and find you, but go to Linnea's right. website. She has lots of advice on how to write. So how do people then, if they're right, okay, okay, I'm going to write, I'm going, I promise I'm going to try and write my own stuff. Where should they, so let's think about LinkedIn, where should they be getting their inspiration for what to actually write? To write about what life. Would they write life. About? life louise life. What, what is going on in your business in your life at the moment is mm -hmm. um grounds for a good post in a lot of cases now i'm not suggesting that people tell us what they had for breakfast the latest new restaurant in town or yeah. where they went on their summer holidays uh but you would be surprised once you get your mind thinking this way what happens in your life that is actually worthy of a post? Now, mm -hmm. it might not be what actually happened in your life, but that can spark an idea. And that's mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about the brain. And you get impetus or um, not impetus, inspiration is the word inspiration. I'm looking for. Inspiration from everywhere, from things that you uh, might see when you're going to work, what you might see happening on public transport, what's on television, mm -hmm. um, anything that goes on in your business your clients are a really good source of content for um for posts and uh, interactions and what happens with them and problems they have um so it's all around you um and i'm sorry to steal bill nighy's line from one of my favorite movies love actually which i've already watched again this season but it's all <laughs> around you he may sing christmas is all around you but in fact inspiration is all around yeah. you too I love it. I would so maybe people could have a little notebook and take notes about things. And you know, if something happens in your work, if you take a little note and think, I could talk about that on your, your phone. phone. Yeah, You've always got your phone with you, haven't you? Everywhere mm -hmm. you go, so yeah. put a little note on your phone. So it's a really good way to oh, do that. I know. I was going to say to you um, about when we're talking about how do you actually write. So um, one of my children has not got great handwriting. And we were working with um, OT to improve his handwriting. And they said, you know, actually, it, it might not be, writing might not be the easiest for him. So when he has to write a longer piece for, say, English or something, he dictates it into his phone. And then he's got something to work with. So this is a great tip for anybody out there. You know, if you're like, oh, but I, you know, I don't sit and write on a bit of paper or type, but I'm a rubbish typer. Ding, 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 ding. Um, so you could dictate into your phone and then you've got something to edit. So I think I that think might work for some people. Mm -hmm. And it's much more stream of consciousness as well, mm -hmm. because yeah. the, you're not being hampered by, oh, I've made a mistake in that word. Yeah. And of course, your brain operates faster than your hands can write um, yes. or type even yeah. and so doing it um by recording it i think is just utterly brilliant 
Yes. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. Great tip. Thanks, OT. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, what about consistency? Um, you know, because you said now, you said you're you're a profile writer on LinkedIn and do you write content for clients, Lynette, or do you help clients come up with their yes. own content? Or both? Yes, we help clients come up with their own content and we, but in the main, when we're working with clients, we write it for them. So right. we might consult them about what they want to write. They might give us some um, marketing material that's already been published elsewhere. Yeah. Um, and so we might be repurposing something, but generally we come up with the ideas yes. uh, for their for their content because generally, Louise, they're so busy running their businesses, they don't have time to sit and think about what it is no. they want to write out for their LinkedIn yeah. post they know they want it done they know it yeah. needs to be done but they don't have the skills and they don't have the time to do it so that's where someone like us come in we uh, get in there and talk about the things that are important to their business yeah. um yeah. and because we're professional writers it's uh they get a decent job which is great yeah yes so we do the same thing. Your business and my business do the same thing. Well we don't write yes, profiles. You've met the king. I've heard that you've met the king. Yeah, he's right here behind me on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't tell me that the king was attending this podcast today. You might, yes, <laughs> you might have my hair better. <laughs> I have a spare photograph on my desk. If anybody wants to see, there he is. She is meeting the king. Wow, gorgeous. Oh, that <laughs> lovely photograph. <laughs> I know. Well, actually, it's the lady in the middle is even more exciting. She um, founded the Starling Bank here in the UK. I don't know if you have oh, it in wow. New Zealand. No, um no. yeah she was one of the she started her own bank um so like you know you ever watch mary poppins and, and mr banks and he works in the bank it's all very all men in, in suits and the banking in the uk has been like that for forever and this lady disrupted it and started her own bank <laughs> good for her so that's who's standing beside me she's like so exciting to meet <laughs> <laughs> Forget the king. I just want to really make this really interesting. Yeah, business. Really good good on so you. <laughs> um, so yeah. All right. So we were talking about consistency, and I think yeah. there are a couple of things about consistency that I'd like to mention. One is that when you're posting on LinkedIn, consistency is all about showing up on a regular basis. Yeah. And whether that's once a week, five times a week, whatever it is that you can manage or want to do, doing that regularly over a longer period of time is where you're going to be successful because it really increases your visibility and people get to know you and they know what you talk about, they understand where you're coming from and you do develop that uh, trust with people. So I think mm -hmm. it's important to be consistent on LinkedIn if you're going to start uh, yes. and not get sidetracked onto the next shiny object, uh, which is really quite difficult because LinkedIn is a long game, Louise. You and I both know this. You can't get success in six months on LinkedIn. You have yeah. to be here for the longer haul. So yes. consistency to me is all about showing up regularly and consistency in your posts too. Now, I don't mean uh, that it's the same type of post all the time. If you just did a video post all the time, then I'm not sure that everybody would see your messages. But if you were to um, vary your posts but make your content consistent, like I said mm -hmm. earlier, I talk a lot about new features. And so people know that that's yeah. something I will consistently be talking about. I'll also talk about gardening, but I yeah. don't. Do that much except at weekends so i try to limit that otherwise this would be all about uh, linear talks about gardening not linear talks about linkedin <laughs> but linear it's like you you talk about gardening and then my friend roger talks about going to the port in edinburgh um every friday every saturday morning with his coffee consistently and if roger doesn't show up with his coffee on my linkedin on a saturday morning i'm like what's happened to roger where is he <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got a friend who goes to the beach in uh, Sydney and he does a, a video from the beach every Saturday as well. So I know exactly what you mean and people expect it, right? Mm, um, yeah. And they get used to it and that's where that frequency, it's the old radio ad adage and television advertising, you know, you just have to turn up frequently so that you not saturate people. people don't get, let people get sick of you, but yeah. you do need to show up regularly and when people expect you so that yeah they really you are just top of mind yeah. um, for the right reasons not because oh dear where's roger um has he drowned in his coffee you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no absolutely and it's really it's interesting how you talk about the tv adverts because 
Of course that's true. You see the advert, like Marks and Spencer's here in the UK, they do their they do their adverts. It's not just Brussels sprouts, it's Marks and Spencer's Brussels sprouts. Um, and we, ex- you know, we expect, we're waiting for them. And the Christmas adverts, flip sake, they're all like, has anyone seen the John Lewis Christmas adverts? Like this big thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they even say that. My husband is English. And they even say that here. Um, have you seen this year's Christmas ads from the UK? Because, of course, <laughs> we have relatives in the UK yes. um, in England. So consequently, we hear about some of these things yes. um, as well. So we may be at the bottom of the world, Louise, but we do know what's going on up in yes, your part of it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so what tips do you have for somebody who maybe so maybe somebody's listening or watching Linair and they are writing on LinkedIn and they are they think they're being you know they're they, they feel well, I feel like I'm doing this I'm writing about things that inspire me for my work I'm I'm writing about I'm writing consistently but they're maybe not getting the results that they want from that maybe they're not growing their audience maybe they're not getting anybody engaging with them how can you improve your writing do you think you know do people need like peer 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 not peer review that's like a medical thing but like people to check in on your writing or you know a coach or how do you improve your writing I think better they've always said Louise that the best way to improve your writing is to read more and I think it's hard to go past that and I Mm. I've been a professional writer all my adult life and that's not been five minutes and I (laughs) still get inspiration from other people's posts I look at it and go wow that's a really cool way to do that I've never thought of doing it like that before I'll just save that in my little file yeah and that I think is by far the best way to improve Mm -hmm. your writing is to see what other people who are successful are doing but I would like to talk about a bit about what success means when it comes to this because of Mm -hmm. course we are really trying hard to move away from vanity metrics aren't we we're not looking so much now for views well we're not supposed to be and we're supposed to be looking now more for engagement right and for comments hopefully not ones written by AI and so (laughs) How do you get that engagement? Well, you need to write an engaging style. You need to write in a way that there is something for people to comment on, uh, whether you leave a question at the end or whether it's a poll where you've asked people for an opinion. You need to find a way for people to get involved in what you are saying, what the topic is. Could be controversial. Watch out if you do that, though. Um, It could be just something that really is at the top of the news at the moment and has really got everybody's uh, attention Um, and so and it could be something that's culturally going on Uh, we were talking about Christmas isn't there some kind of competition at the moment to uh, and I'm going to ruin it for people who are involved in this if I'm not very very careful there is a song or a band that you are not allowed to hear over Christmas and if you do yes then you're out of the running for whatever some sort of prizes I don't know how anybody plays that game it's on the radio all the time (laughs) <laughs> right, okay. So we've even heard about that in New Zealand. And so, you know, that is topical. Everybody's talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's the kind of thing that you can be making sure that you are on top of what's on in your industry. Yeah. Um, if you are showing that you know what's happening, for me, that's new features. Um, if you are talking about what's going, your latest news in your industry yeah. and what that might mean, um, or looking at the future, at trends perhaps, all yeah. of that not only makes great content, but it also means that people can get their um, hands into it in terms of thinking about it for themselves and yeah. then responding. Because that's what you want. You need to touch a nerve or you mm. need to make somebody think think with your post and if you can do that they are much more likely to respond with a comment yes so I love when somebody says if a new feature appears so my thing with new features like obviously I don't do it with everyone because you'd be doing it forever is to make a little short video and put it up on YouTube and then I'll put it up in a post on LinkedIn and what I love is is the people who say Louise this is so good you always keep us up to date with things that are happening on LinkedIn and Lanier they're not they're not people who necessarily are on LinkedIn you know more than once a week um you know and they're not they're not LinkedIn trainers and LinkedIn consultants (laughs) 
I'm so, just going to uh, make a note of that little idea, Louise, because that's a very good one. Video <laughs> of new feature, like yes. Louise. Now, when you're doing something, I think, that somebody else is already doing, you don't want to be copying them because that's yeah. a really good way to lose friends. So yeah. you have to adapt it to somehow to be yourself. And I think that that's what really works well with the kind of thing that we're talking about is that content can be done in different ways. Now, I usually do my... Uh, new features as PDFs yes. um, and that works really well yesterday's mm -hmm. didn't because it wouldn't scroll past page four because of a LinkedIn wide glitch but generally PDFs are a really good way to get your message out there and yeah. you're doing that on a different platform using YouTube to bring people back to LinkedIn I love it yes oh thanks good we could do we could do collaborations on videos <laughs> <Very good. laughs> All right, Linnea, this has been really, really brilliant and helpful. Do what were the name of your books again? Tell us again. Linkability, link ability, four powerful strategies to maximize your LinkedIn success. Brilliant. And that's the one that I wrote. And so that's about the strategies for success on LinkedIn, obviously. And Business Gold is the one about LinkedIn mm -hmm. company pages. There's a new edition of that out just last month. And uh, that's available on Amazon. In fact, both of the books are available on Amazon. Right. And you'll not be surprised to learn that I have a website called linkability.biz uh, where I have a lot of content. Now, that's a membership site. Um, Louise, yes. but uh, people can join it, have a look at all the content for seven days for absolutely free, no credit card required. Yes, and also on your website, you've got loads of you've got loads of free download PDFs. I noticed that as well. That you're like, yeah. you know, yeah. people don't need to sign up for email lists for that. It's all there. Go and check out Linair's website, linkability.biz. I love the name, Linkability. It's brilliant. Yeah, I like it too, actually. But I'll never write a book again that's got a piece of punctuation that has no name in the middle of it because I separate link and ability with this little dot that doesn't sit at the bottom. Ah. It sits in the middle. Um, and I don't think that that has a name. Anyway, it looks good, but uh, it's very hard on uh, SEO type things. Um, oh, no. But what uh, what I did want to say, Louise, that most of my content is, of course, on LinkedIn. So of anybody course. who goes to my uh, LinkedIn profile uh, will see that uh, in my activity section, which is one of the br greatest inventions of the year, in my view, um, you can see under articles, under videos, under documents, all the different content that I put together um, this year. So, um, And I have in the past done quite a bit about writing in, my, in the article section. So scroll back yes. through some of those and see what you can find. Fabulous, fabulous, and check out the link. Is is the membership called Linkability? Linkability membership. It's just yeah. called Linkability. It's nice and easy. Just Linkability. I love it. Okay, right, everybody, go and check out all of those things. And Lanair, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It's been up. You've been fabulous, and you and we're both in the same um, lighting zone now. <laughs> We do. Thank you, Louise. It's been a pleasure having a chat with you today. I just so much enjoyed it. It's been so much fun. Brilliant. Thanks so much, there. Bye. Bye. But that was just absolutely delightful having Lanair on the podcast. Uh, a long time coming. For those of you who don't know her, really go and connect or follow her on LinkedIn because she shares a lot of really fabulous tips and advice. Um, and if you are into gardening, I'm a wannabe gardener. I'm not brilliant at it, but um, she always talks about her garden at the weekends. And I really, I really like it. We compare gardens where you live with gardens in New Zealand. So if you want to check out how we write content for clients, then please pop over to louisebrogan.com and check out our um, writing packages. And also in 2024, we're going to be doing a lot more video packages with our clients. And if you, if what we said about AI resonated with you earlier in the podcast, one really good way to stand out on LinkedIn is to have videos of yourself talking. And if that, you're like, oh, Louise, I can't do that. How do I do that? It's okay. I have developed a framework to do that with you, to take all the pain away. Uh, all you do is show up talk to me and I will produce four 
fabulous LinkedIn worthy videos that you can use in your content. Uh, if you want to find out about that, go and check out the video visibility package over at louisebrogan.com. And if you find this useful, please do feel free to share it with somebody else who you think might benefit. And we will talk to you on the podcast next week.